Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayya ala salat. Hayya ala salat. Hayya ala al-falat. Hayya ala al-falat. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. In alhamdulillah, ahmaduhu wa as-sa'inuhu wa as-saghfiruhu wa as-sahdih. Wa a'udhu billahi ta'ala min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Min yahdihi allahu falamudilla lahu wa mayudlil falahadiya lah. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lah. وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من بين خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح لهذه الأمة وكشف الله تعالى به الغمة صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وأزواجه وذريته كما صليت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وأزواجه وذريته كما باركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي رسول الله وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فقد صح أن أبا بكر وعمر, بن الخ... وعمر رضي الله عنهما انطلق إلى أم أيمن كما جاء في الصحيح عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه قال قال أبو بكر رضي الله عنه بعد وفاة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لعمر انطلق بنا إلى أم أيمن نزورها كما كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يزورها فلما انتهينا إليها أو قال فلما انتهيا إليها بكت يعني عندما جلس إليها بكت رضي الله عنها وأرضاها فقال لها ما يبكيك وذكر الحديث بطوله إلى أن قال وسألها أما تعلمين أن ما عند الله عز وجل خير لنبيه لأن الله يقول ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى فقالت فأجابت بأنها تعلم أن ما عند الله خير لنبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم قالت ولكن أبكي لانقطاع الوحي أو في رواية ولكن أبكي أن الوحي قد انقطع من السماء 
وأم أيمن كانت مربية النبي كانت مربية النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هي التي ربت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم واعتنت به في صغره عندما كانت أمه على قيد الحياة وبعد وفاة أمه وورد أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يقول هي أمي بعد أمي يعني هي التي تولت رعايته بعد وفاة أمه صلوات الله وسلامه عليه ورضي الله عنها وأرضاها انظر إلى فقهها تعلم أن القرآن ونزول الوحي من أعظم نعم الله عز وجل علينا وبعثة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مولد النبي وبعثته صلى الله عليه وسلم وهجرته صلى الله عليه وسلم وسيرته صلى الله عليه وسلم كانت فصلا من فصول نزول الوحي وكان نزول الوحي فصلا من فصولها فالأمران متلازمان لا ينفكان القرآن الوحي والسيرة العطرة لنبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم القرآن والسنة النبوية أمران لا ينفكان عن بعضهما فماذا قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن هذا الوحي وعن هذا الكتاب الذي هو ثمرة هذا الوحي جاء في أثر ويبدو أن هذا الأثر موقوف لا يصح نسبته إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بل هو موقوف على سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه وأرضاه يصف القرآن وفي رواية الترمذي أنه وصف سمعه علي من النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن القرآن هدفي من هذه الخطبة أيها الإخوة أننا في هذه الأيام كثير من الناس يتذكر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وسيرة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهذه الأيام توافق تلك التي الأيام التي قيل أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ولد فيها وتوافق يقينا تلك الأيام التي توفي فيها رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا أريد أن أدخل في قضية النقاش الاحتفال بمولد النبي ومع عدم الاحتفال بمولد النبي ما الذي ما هي الثمرة العملية التي نجنيها فيقول رضي الله عنه وأرضاه يصف القرآن الذي تركه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فينا والذي هو يعني النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عندما سئلت عائشة عن أخلاقه قالت كان خلقه القرآن سيرة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ترجمة للقرآن من أراد أن يحتفل بالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأن يحتفي به وأن يظهر حبه لا يمكن لا يمكن له أن يحقق ذلك إذا لم يحتفل بكتاب الله ويعتني به ويحتفي به ويجعله نبراسا له وهدى يهتدي به يقول ألا إنها ستكون فتنة فقلت يعني من علي بن أبي طالب ما المخرج منها يا رسول الله قال كتاب الله هذا المخرج فيه نبأ من قبلكم وخبر ما بعدكم وحكم ما بينكم هو الفصل ليس بالهزل من تركه من جبار قصمه الله ومن ابتغى الهدى في غيره أضله الله وهو حبل الله المتين وهو الذكر الحكيم وهو الصراط المستقيم هو الذي لا تزيغ به الأهواء ولا تلتبس به الألسنة ولا يشبع منه العلماء ولا يخلق يعني لا يبلى لا يهترئ على كثرة الرد ولا تنقضي عجائبه هو الذي لم تنتهي الجن إذ سمعته حتى قالوا إنا سمعنا قرآنا عجبا يهدي إلى الرشد فآمنا به ومن قال به صدق ومن عمل به أجر ومن حكم به عدل ومن دعا إليه هدي إلى صراط مستقيم أيها الإخوة ليكن هذا الموسم موسم اتصال بكتاب الله عز وجل وبهدي نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم ونحرص جميعا 
على أن نكون من أهل القرآن الذين هم أهل الله وخاصته Dear brothers and sisters It is reported in an authentic hadith that Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhuma decided to go and visit Umm Ayman Umm Ayman was the the lady her name was Baraka Abyssinian lady she raised the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yani in today's lingo you can you can we can refer to her as the nanny of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it was reported that he himself said that she was my mother after my mother she was looking after him when his mother was alive and after his mother's death he was approximately maybe five or six sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so Abu Bakr said to Umar, why don't we go and visit Ummu Ayman just like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do when he was alive. Let's go and keep that prophetic tradition. And there are so many lessons we can learn from this short hadith. So many lessons. So when they ended up visiting her and sitting with her and conversing with her, she started to cry. So they said to her, why are you crying, Umm Ayman? They were trying to calm her down. Don't you know that what Allah has chosen for His Prophet is better? Don't you know what the Prophet وسلم, what he has with his Lord, he's in a better place right now? She said, indeed, I'm not ignorant of the fact that where the Prophet is now is better. I'm not ignorant of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى the Prophet وسلم, did not depart. And these are the days where we remember the seerah of the Prophet وسلم, And I am very sad to say these are the days because we are supposed to celebrate the Prophet وسلم, and celebrate his legacy every single day. True Muslims, those who love the Prophet وسلم, truly have plenty of their daily activities to remind them of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They don't have to wait for that one particular season or one particular day. That let me frankly say, we don't even know whether the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born on the 12th or not. We don't know. The fact of the matter is, right, there is no conclusive evidence. In fact, it's very weak. It's less, it's most likely that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died on the 12th as opposed to being ba uh, born on the 8th. And I'm not here today to basically debate the issue. You have one group that says we should celebrate his birth or we should celebrate his life during this season. Others who say, no, we should mourn his death during this season. Right? And there are those who... And then there are those who say, no, we should celebrate the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his legacy every single day. And we should be engaging in activities and programs and conversations and debates and dialogues that will bring us closer to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came for. Should be the principles that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called to. That's what we should be focusing on. That's true love. What I'm here for today is to remind us that the Prophet Sallallahu left something. That those who loved him the most and followed his example the most, his companions, members of his household, were able to understand the value of it. And they followed his teachings. So in this story, we find Abu Bakr telling Umar, let's go and do what the Prophet used to do. They followed his example. Even when it comes to going and visiting someone. And because of that special connection she had to the Prophet wasallam, and the connection that the Prophet wasallam had to her, radiallahu anhu, loved him, not only loved the Prophet wasallam. His two companions and friends, devout and loyal, they loved those whom he loved. They honored those whom he honored. 
they went to visit her. They sat down with her. And when she started crying, they tried to comfort her. And remind her. She reminded them that she's still aware of the fact that what the Prophet has is better. I know the Prophet is in a better place. However, I am crying for something else. Something else that we have lost. That we are going to miss forever. She said, وَلَكِنْ أَبْكِي أَبْكِي لِنْقِطَاعِ الْوَحْيِ Revelation has ceased. The man to whom the Qur'an was being revealed to, those fresh revelations that were coming down, that open line of communication to heaven is severed. No more fresh revelation. No more frequent visits from Jibreel. And for you to understand what that meant to the companions, because the companions related to the Qur'an and the revelation of it on a different level. To us, we love the Qur'an. We get mesmerized we get, you know, by it. We love to listen to it. We have our own, you know, we have our favorite qari's and all of that. And many of us, we're moved by it. But most of the time, is, is it because of the message of the Qur'an? Because of our deep understanding of the Qur'an? Because the Qur'an touches the core of our hearts? And because we can relate to it? Or is it because we just like the, the sound, the melody, the beautiful voice of the Qari? Or because it just, you know, what is it? The Sahaba dealt with it at a different level. There was indeed that, that what I call a dynamic relationship between them and the Qur'an. It was very personal. She is missing that. Just for us to understand. You know, in the month of Ramadan, one of the reasons we are at a higher spiritual level, we are much more motivated, is because of the fact that we relate or we listen to the Qur'an and we read the Qur'an and because the angels come down. And in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an about Laylatul Qadr, the night of decree or the night of power, تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا You see, Jibreel is no longer coming on a frequent, regular basis. But he does come down. We know that for sure. At least once a year. Right? On the night of Al-Qadr, Allah says in the Quran, تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels and والروح and الروح is Jibreel. They come down. The Holy Spirit. Right? Jibreel alayhi salam. Comes down. So we are inspired. Imagine that happening more frequently. Imagine that happening on a daily or weekly basis. Every time Jibreel came and brought new revelation or came to uh, answer the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or converse with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Medina and the companions in that community felt there was a different spirit. Everybody was motivated. They were at their best. And they felt the effect of the, of, of, of the visit of this special guest. Umm Ayman is missing that. She's missing the Prophet. She's missing Jibreel. And she's missing fresh revelation coming down from heaven. The Quran. And she's crying for that. This is what the Quran meant to them. So brothers and sisters, as this is my first khutbah in this year, 2013, I wanted us to focus the greatest miracle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the Qur'an. This is, this is the greatest legacy. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left behind. He says, Taraktu fikum. I have left for you. I have not, I'm not abandoning you. He did not abandon us, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. I am so hurt and devastated and, 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 and whenever I remember the fact that we didn't even get to see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we love him, looking forward to seeing him, alayhi salatu We didn't even get a chance. Imagine, multiply that by, you know, a hundred times. Imagine the level of devastation the companions had when the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, departed. When the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, told them that there is a, a righteous servant of God whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the choice to either remain on this planet and stay there amongst his followers and people, or depart and be with the Lord. 
he said, and in one narration it says that Abu Bakr jumped and he said, I, I beg you, O Messenger of Allah, or we beg you, O Messenger of Allah, choose us. Because they didn't want to let go. He said, the man or he himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, has chosen to be with his Lord. The Prophet told them he was leaving. He was told that his mission, that he has accomplished his mission, and time, it was time for him to leave. When Surah, Al -As when Surah Al Nasr was revealed, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu cried and he was weeping because he knew that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was soon to leave. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to let them know that he wasn't abandoning them. He wasn't leaving them. He has left with them. What if they were to hold on to? They will be saved. And they will join him alayhi salatu wasalam in Jannah. And he pointed to the book of Allah and his tradition. That's what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam left with us. That's why one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam went to the marketplace after the death of the Prophet. And he said, oh people, you guys are here, intermingling, being preoccupied with this, with the pursuit of dunya, the pursuit of materials, and the treasure that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has left behind, the state of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the inheritance of the Messenger of Allah is being divided in the masjid, in his own mosque. So people ran. He said, everyone wanted a piece of what the Prophet ﷺ left, at least for the blessings of it. And then they came back to him and they said, we didn't, there was no treasure, there was nothing. He said, what did you find when you went there? They said, we found groups of people sitting in circles, studying the Quran and the prophetic statements. Knowledge. They're pursuing the knowledge. Of he said, that is indeed what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has left behind. That's what you should be competing to pursue and gain. For prophets and messengers did not leave gold or silver. What they left is ilm, knowledge, revelation. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make you an eye of those who listen and follow the best for they listen to. أقول هذا القول واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه يا أخي. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى وبعد. Brothers and sisters, it is reported that Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله عنه وارضاه said, describing the Quran, that it is the book of Allah. It has the narrative of those who are before you. The news of those who are after you. It is the judge between you. It is the criteria. It cannot be taken lightly. Whoever abandons it due to ignorance will be destroyed by Allah. And whoever seeks guidance by other than it will be misled by Allah. It is Allah's strongest rope. Or you can even say only. It is the wise remembrance. It is the straight path. It is not strayed by one's own desires, nor are the tongues confused by it. Its wonders never cease, and the scholars never satisfy themselves of it. Whoever speaks with it has spoken the truth. Whoever works upon it will be rewarded. Whoever judges according to it will be just, and whoever calls to it will be guided to a straight path, and that is the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the Quran. This is the Quran. Brothers and sisters, in, in the spirit of this, we are offering so many activities and programs, alhamdulillah, since the beginning of this year, and there is more to come. And if you don't get anything out of this khutbah except if, if you can't, if, if we all come out of this khutbah making a commitment to one, 
of these things, one of those three things, then alhamdulillah, I have done my job. I have called, inshallah ta'ala, for this year to be the year of the Qur'an in our lives. Remember, for those who love the Prophet wasallam, want to know what the Prophet was like, when Aisha was asked about the Prophet, she said to the person who asked her the Prophet, Urwa ibn Zubair, her own nephew, asked her, what was the Prophet like? Tell me, because a lot of people, you know, someone was asking me, are you going to give us the physical description of the Prophet? What he looked like, what his smile was like. Alhamdulillah, these are great, and we should learn them and study them. In fact, there will be a class, right? It will be taught in a class. There will be a class in which these kind of details will be shared. But I, I want us to go beyond that. He asked her, what was the Prophet ﷺ like? She said, don't you read the Qur'an? He said, yes, but what does that have to do with the Prophet, with what, with what I asked? She said, فَذَلِكَ نَبِيُّكُمْ That was your Prophet. That was your Prophet. كَانَ خُلُقُهُ الْقُرْآنِ His character was the Qur'an. He was of the Qur'an. You want to understand what was responsible for making the Prophet ﷺ the person he was? The Qur'an. You want to know what the Prophet has left behind? If you want to know what, you know, what kind of, of, of letter or what kind of notes or what kind of guidance you would have received, if you want answer for questions, contemporary questions and issues that we have now, read the Qur'an and read the Prophet, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's commentary on the Qur'an. And that is his statements. Le read the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's application of the Qur'an. And that is the, the prophetic tradition. Learn it and study it. On Wednesday night, we have Qur'an conversation, Qur'anic conversation. Sheikh Mustafa and myself, right, we're doing tafsir. And we're going to be uh, doing the tafsir of Surah Al-Baqarah. I mean, we're, we're, we're at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. And we started the tafsir of the greatest ayah of the Qur'an. And I urge you all to come and attend Wednesday night. Come and join us. Ayatul Kursi. Everybody in the class basically demanded that we take our time and dedicate the entire session next week, next Friday, next Wednesday, after Isha, one hour dedicated just to discussing this ayah. Ayat al-Kursi, Allahu, the greatest ayah that we should all memorize and we should all know. The greatest ayah of the Qur'an. Very powerful. Wallahi, when you see what the scholars said about it, some scholars, wallahi subhanAllah, this is one of those things that moved me. One of the greatest scholars of tafsir, he could not even discuss it in his book. He wrote commentary on most of the Qur'an. The Ayatul Kursi was one of the ayahs that he skipped because it was just beyond, beyond, I don't want to say his ability, but he couldn't. He couldn't. One of the commentators, one of his students said he intentionally bypassed that. He couldn't handle it. I was listening to one of the scholars talking about Ayatul Kursi and he was crying the whole time. Crying the whole time. So I urge you to come and join us. We have Tafsir Halaqa after Fajr on Saturday, on Sunday. Sunday, after Fajr we have Tafsir Halaqa. Surah Yusuf, one of the most beautiful surahs of the Qur'an. And the entire Qur'an is beautiful. Amazing story, right? Again, conversation style. I urge you to come and join us. And if you don't like it, I will, I will reimburse you for whatever. You know. Come and join us. After Fajr, pray Fajr Jama'ah with us. And then after Fajr, we sit for half an hour and we talk about the various scenes in the Surah, of, in the, in, in surah Yusuf. Right? But there is much more. There is more to come, brothers and sisters. One of the greatest projects that we have ever, you know, we are, you know, uh, have ever worked on. And we are going to launch it, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, insha'Allah, in uh, February, is the uh, College of Islamic Studies, insha'Allah. So there will be an open house here at the masjid with Sheikh Mustafa Umar, insha'Allah, discussing all of your questions about the upcoming College of Islamic Studies curriculum and its goals on Friday, February 1st, from 7.30 p.m. to uh, 9 p.m., insha'Allah ta'ala, or... Sunday, for those who can't make it on Friday, Sunday, February 3rd, inshallah ta'ala, from 11 a.m. to 12 noon, to, to noon, inshallah ta'ala. So, first quarter, keep in mind, keep in mind we'll start, inshallah ta'ala, uh, uh, February 5th, inshallah ta'ala, through April 14th. So, sign up if you haven't signed up. 
and join us in the open or uh, house or in the orientation session, inshallah ta'ala. So don't forget this. So remember Wednesday night. Remember Sunday morning, inshallah ta'ala, tafsir surah Yusuf. And um, put this date on your uh, calendar, inshallah, February 1st, Friday, or uh, Sunday, February 3rd, inshallah ta'ala. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim. Wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bima fihi min al-ayati wa al-dhikr al-hakim. Allahumma... اجعل القرآن الكريم العظيم ربيع قلوبنا ونور أبصارنا وجلاء أحزاننا اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا ورزقنا تلاوته آناء الليل وأطراف النهار اللهم اجعلنا مما يحل حلاله ويحرم حرامه اللهم رب السماوات والأرض يا حي يا قيوم نسألك أن تنصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم أغث أهل الشام وانصرهم نصرا مؤزرا اللهم عليك بمن بغى عليهم اللهم عجل المسلمين بالفرج يا رحمن اللهم عجل المسلمين بالفرج يا رحمن اللهم عجل المسلمين بالفرج يا رحمن عباد الله إن الله أمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون